I know we all have busy weekends, um, so I appreciate your uh, taking a little time to spend with us to learn more about what we're doing here. Um, how many of you have uh, not uh, participated in or watched one of our events before, or at least in a very long time? Is anybody here that's completely new to what we do? I asked this the other day and got a lot of people sitting on their hands very quietly. Well, we're, we're very happy to have you and uh, glad you came. And uh, I hope uh, that we at least have a, an opportunity to answer some of your questions that you have. Now, one of the things I want you to understand, uh, and, and it's very important, that you understand why you're here and what it is that you're looking for. Okay? So I just want you to be thinking about that as we go through this information. So I'm Tony, by the way. <clears throat> I started the Intentional Trader almost 11 years ago. We've been doing the same thing almost from the beginning. So those that, uh, so Cross, if you have been for some years, you've known about us, you will be hearing a lot of the same information that if you were here five years ago that I was talking about. The thing is, it's, it works. So don't, why am I, why would I change it? Why would it be different? We just keep making it better and easier. For example, Robert, the rock star is an indicator that is just something to make what we're doing easier for people to do. It, we're still doing the same thing because it works. All right. And we're going to talk about that today. We've got, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We, uh, we had an event on Thursday, and if you didn't get a chance to uh, come to that event, we did record it, and uh, hopefully you got the recording and you had a chance to watch the recording, okay? So today, we're going to quickly go over, the, at the end, those of you that watched the recording didn't get a chance to participate in the little fun quiz that we had um, on Thursday. This was just to kind of test how well you're paying attention, how well you got the information. But it also helps me understand where people aren't getting the message or understanding what it is that I'm trying to explain. So if I give quizzes, it's more about helping me than it is about helping you. Okay? And it's also kind of fun. It breaks up the monotony of just sitting and listening. But... I don't have it on the agenda here, but before the Q&A, we're going to take another little quiz, okay? And this is just for fun, just to see how well, you know, you guys absorb the information. I'm going to be giving a lot of information, and I'm hoping that this is information that you're going to use to help make a decision on furthering your trading career, okay? So we're going to talk about the, uh, the quiz results then we're going to go over three different trade setups. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over to the Rockstar, but we talked about that on Thursday. So we're going to talk about three different ones today. And they're all pullback trades. They're all very similar, but they have slightly different rules. Okay? So the, one of the things I want you guys to understand, oh, in this statement, Substitute greatness with making money. So if you read this statement, you can apply this to trading. For those of you that are constantly thinking about money and you came into trading with monetary goals, like my goal is to make $1,000 a day or $100 a day, or whatever, 
and that's a goal. Chances are that's more of a dream. The goal needs to be finding consistency. And the money will just show up. Okay? Greatness will just show up. So going back to Dwayne Johnson, who's The Rock, by the way? They will say The Rock on here because then you wouldn't take it seriously. Become consistent and do that over and over and over again. First, you have to find a very small edge to exploit and then learn to exploit that edge. Practice, practice, practice. Become a professional at exploiting that edge. And then the work that you need to do is not I need to make X dollars a day or a week or a month. The work is how can I become the best in the world at exploiting this edge that I have? <clears throat> all right, I'm going to show you. That's what the rest of today is all about. I'm going to show you a small um, and but a very powerful and consistent edge. Okay, what you decide to do with it after that is up to you. We've got hundreds of traders that are um, exploiting this particular edge that we have and have had, you know, have been exploiting for nearly 11 years now. Okay. So first, let's go over, <clears throat> for those of you that were here on Thursday, we we'll do this quickly. Here's the question. So, <clears throat> and you can, just for those of you that weren't here on Thursday, um, this is kind of the questions you can expect to get at the end of this session today. All right. <clears throat> So for momentum traders, momentum trades are based on, and most everybody got this right, based on relative to recent past conditions. Aru, <laughs> are you there? Are you a are you a Spartan runner? That's what Spartan racers say. Aru. Okay, at what point do momentum traders get triggered? I was surprised how many people miss this question. And I'm going to go over it again in just a second. This is on that uh, graphic that I posted. This is the graphic, okay? And I talked about each one of these things. Number three, momentum traders get triggered to buy up as much as fast as they can. That's this point. This is where the momentum traders are jumping in. And this is where they're jumping out. Okay, and it's all mechanically induced. Okay, area label one indicates, again, number of wrong answers here. Price is channeling. Oh wait, I'm wrong. Actually, the right answer is all of the above. Sorry, but most people got prices channeling and uh, instead of all of the above. So prices channeling could be low interest, could be areas of accumulation and distribution. This, you're going to hear, we're going to talk about this today. This is essential to our trading, all right? We need this. Don't get bored and decide to go get up and walk away or go get coffee or say, oh, the markets are boring. Oh, there's nothing to do today. The ch price is channeling. I'm just sitting here waiting. You're waiting for sure because we can't have this without this first. Oh, we can, but it's, it's generally not going to be as good. <clears throat> All right. So that is telling us that something good is coming. So our indicators print as soon as a condition is confirmed to exist. There is no repainting. Uh, they are not lagging indicators. They, as the, the tick that comes in that confirms a condition exists is when we print. <clears throat> you guys still there? Can you still hear me? I can't. Oh, now I can hear me. I have a... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 
Um, cross, no. And here's why. And that's a good question. All right, so our indicators are for NinjaTrader. When you reload a chart, in order to reload the charts quickly, NinjaTrader only reads high, low, open, and close. It reads four, four measurements to reload the chart. If a tick came in that triggered that a condition exists during intrabar, not at high, low, open, or close, but at some other time, then when you refresh the chart, there's a chance that that indicator will not show up. And that's the downside, I want to say, of very high performance indicators when we are very tick specific. Okay. Um, what you would want to do is um, run the market replay instead of just refreshing the chart. You'd want to back it up and run it up to the time that you that you want to trade so that the you know the indicators are all printing correctly. Yep. Market replay is the best way to do it. Okay, price must do what before trade setup can be considered? What I just said. Break out of a channel. We are dependent on that. Okay, so if you look at this chart, I kept seeing these areas where sudden, something sudden and dramatic happened after a channeling. Okay, so we have this channeling, and this is, I'm going over this again because this seems to be the part where most people got messed up on Thursday. So I'm going to do this particular slide again today. Everything else is, is new. So what we're looking for and what is required of our trade setups is we're looking for price to be channeling. And channeling could be low interest, meaning there's nobody trading, nothing's going on. Or it could be areas of accumulation and distribution where the big boys are actually setting up a scenario where they're going to manipulate the markets and manipulate us and create a reaction that they then take advantage of to take all of our money. How many of you end the day with more money than you started with on most days? Well, guess who's getting that money if you're losing it? All right. So we need that channeling. The accumulation and distribution is happening, but that's not what we're trading, and that's that specifically is not important to us. What is becomes important to us is that the buying or selling, it can go either way, suddenly breaks out of that channel. Okay, and that's when we start paying attention. Now here's what happens. When, when price starts to break out of this channel, momentum traders become triggered. Now, momentum traders are also generally um, not retail traders like us. They are generally going to be an HFT kind of, kind of thing where, you know, the high frequency traders, the quants, the hedge funds. The big money that has the uh, options and abilities to move the markets, the uh, exchanges give these guys kind of some leeway so to provide liquidity so they can do things we can't do. Well, they can certainly, what they want to do, the momentum traders, rather than what the rest of us do, and we want to buy low, sell high, and vice versa. The retail traders buy high, sell higher. Okay. So what they're going to do is buy on the way up. And during this burst, they're going to sell it off. Um, LT, they do it in all time frames. Okay. They all operate in all time frames. But 
most of the uh, mechanical trading, most of the big money operates very fast, which is why they're able to do what they do. You know they can operate in milliseconds now because they've got these supercomputers inside the exchanges or at least next door. So why would they operate uh, over a long term if they have such a strong edge by manipulating the market in milliseconds? Uh, Dave, do you sometimes see that in order to break a strong area of resistance support that a powerful energetic move happens to break that level and therefore is legit? Um, typically, I'm going to see levels broken um, where they just blast right through them because the – see, not all HFTs, not all of the big boys operate the exact same way and they don't have the exact same algorithms. They certainly do get into fights with each other. So they're, they're not always successful <clears throat> for the most part. Um, but you will see these HFTs and quads blast it right through an area of support or resistance because they don't care. Some of the others do because they do care because they know retail traders are watching them. Okay? And retail traders respect support and resistance lines. And that's where they're going to be putting their orders in. And that's where the some of the HFTs and the market makers are targeting them. Okay? So they all know how we think and how we operate emotionally. Right? They know. And it's up to them to tune their system to take advantage of us, right? So the best thing for us to do, yeah, the, the inexperienced traders are the ones that get crushed. The traders that fall for it every time are the ones that get crushed, which is a lot, right? So the momentum trader strategy Rather than buy low, sell high, they buy high, sell higher, okay? And they want to do it really fast. And they can do it really fast. Buyers begin to come in up here. Well, this is where, how many of you have seen this and go, oh, crap, market's taking off. I need to jump in, right? Yeah, I know, not you, but everybody else does it, right? And you get excited and you jump in and you go, woohoo, I'm going for a ride. Let's go. And what's actually happening during that time, you just bought up the instruments that they just sold. And you just bought up, which is going to run it up just a little bit higher. That's called freight training. So the freight training, and I call it that because it takes that long for this to slow down and stop. All of a sudden, demand's gone. Only those few of us that are dumb enough to try to jump in this pushed it up a little bit higher, which these guys count on. Push it up a little bit higher. And then they then all of a sudden the momentum, which has already changed here, the momentum has already changed because they just dumped all these contracts or assets and overwhelmed the markets to the point where price is going to drop, right? There's more more supply than there is demand so it price drops now that you understand what's going on this is a very simple edge and it happens over and over and over and it doesn't matter if it's stocks doesn't matter if it's currencies doesn't matter if it's futures when we're done here today open a chart pick a time frame of course, we prefer the faster ones, like one minute. LT, to answer your question, I trade one minute because that's where the action is. That's where the manipulations are happening, and that gets me in and out of the market very quickly. The worst place to be as a trader 
is in the market. You don't want to be in the market longer than you need to be. How many of you have completely and totally failed at managing your emotions trying to uh, manage a trade with a single contract that you want it to go 20, 40, 60 ticks? But you fail to manage your emotions during that long ride. That was me. Why don't you use MinjaTrader? It's free. YM is the uh, the uh, Dow uh, E Mini. It's a it's an index, uh, uh, futures index. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, Ninja is so much better than MetaTrader, and it's free. So use MetaTrader for trading, but use Ninja for charting. We have a lot of people that do that. All right, so everybody understands this. This is important to understand what we're doing here. Okay, so here's here's a, a video of, of a setup. Okay, so you can actually see how this happens. It's very important to actually watch it on a live chart rather than having me scroll around on static charts to show you what to look for. I mean, I've, I used to attend webinars where guys would do that, and it all looks very compelling until you actually try to do it. And it doesn't look the same on a moving chart as it did on a static chart when it makes total sense, right? So we have this area of channeling, price channeling, right? Nothing seems to be going on here. And then suddenly, price starts to drop out of this channel. And I'm just going to let this video roll now, and we're going to watch what a typical trade would look like. Okay, now, you see the candlesticks that are going from black to a lighter gray. Exactly. Black to a lighter gray. That's our momentum indicator. The lighter the color of the candlestick, the higher the probability of exhaustion setting in. Now, this bar has just become oversold. Another indicator that exhaustion has set in. So we've got strong momentum, an almost white candlestick, and an oversold condition. Now, for those of us in the trade room, we're paying attention. Because we've got a potential opportunity here, but it hasn't it hasn't presented itself yet. No trigger. Now, we're seeing even more exhaustion. Now, here's a trigger. See that little arrow? Speed tick. We're seeing really strong momentum. You see that white bar? We're seeing that speed tick. That speed tick says that the big boys are most likely now manipulating this bar because the orders going through are going through at a rate much faster. They're being processed much faster than us retail traders could trade, meaning it's most likely a, uh, a machine inside the exchanges that are able to place those orders that quickly. We've got buyers just sitting here waiting. And now the buyers and sellers, that dot tells me that the sellers are getting tired and the buyers are stepping in. So right there is a rock star trade setup. We put our order on right there. Now, if price backed up like you saw it back up a little bit, take a better Take a better fill. It doesn't have to be on the open of the bar. If you see it here, and by the time you go to place your order, it's down here, heck yeah, go ahead. Get a better fill. I do that all the time in the trade room. We're waiting to see where this bar opens to make a decision. If it drops, 
so much the better. If it takes off, eh, we missed a trade. All right. That's a rock star trade setup. And we trade it and it happens all the time over and over and over again. So remember what I said? Find something simple to become the best in the world at. And this is about as simple as it gets. Okay? So we've got the price breaking out of the range. We got the breakout bar is larger than the previous bars. You can automate it, Larry, with uh, Bloodhound if you want. Um, so the breakout bar is typically going to be much bigger than these channeling bars. Okay? We get strong momentum, which you can see in our momentum indicator where the, where the bars go from black to a lighter gray to a white. And the, the lighter it gets. Now, you can, if, if those colors don't make sense to you, you can change them inside the indicator. The parameters are all, you know, there for you to change. Price becomes overbought. That's huge. Now, we're not doing anything really fancy here. All this is, this pink outline, is a momentum oscillator that we've removed from the bottom of the screen from taking up space. And we put it where your eyeballs are actually already looking. You're already looking here. You don't have to look down here to try to figure out if this oscillator has become overbought or oversold. It's right here. It's a yes or no answer. Okay. Um, you can add sound alerts to the Rockstar if you want. Okay, so price is now overbought. What's that telling us? The buyers are getting tired. All right. Orders are being, this speed tick, this right here, this little thing. Entire trading systems are built around this. Entire trading systems are built around this. Okay, with lots of lines and lots of other time frames and lots of order flow stuff and lots of information. These are, they look so simple. There is so much going on inside of these indicators. All of these. Not the elbows. The elbows is pretty simple. But there's so much going on inside of these indicators. Uh, so much technical analysis. They're very powerful. Price action inside of this bar, indicated by this little dot right here. The price action inside of this bar suggests that there's a lot of buying and selling going on inside of this bar at this point up here. It wasn't just all buying. It was a lot of buying and then a lot of buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. Well, if we already know that price is getting exhausted and the buyers and sellers are in a fight, who's going to win that? An exhausted buyer or a seller that's just been sitting up here waiting? Next bar opens with a rock star that tells us there's divergence. Meaning, even though price is going this way, momentum has changed directions. All right, let me see if I can uh, move my microphone a little bit closer to my mouth. Is that better? Also, if I talk quickly, it tends to do that sometimes. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to talk a little bit more slowly and directly into the microphone. Okay, for those of you that don't know what divergence is, divergence is when momentum 
has already changed directions. It's very typical that price and momentum move together. Okay, it's very that's their that's that's most typical. When they get out of sync with each other, then we have a condition called divergence. Now, to make it simple, I have a, a very, I'll talk about that towards the end, Dennis. I'll give you the rules of the trade. Okay? So the divergence suggests that momentum has changed. Price will almost always follow divergence or, or follow momentum. The middle of this part, this arrow, did you, uh, this, yeah, that's the speed tick. That's the one that I said that the orders are being processed faster than is typical for retail traders. When that happens, we get this speed tick. Okay. Very, very powerful indicator for us. And, it, and it's really the start of everything. You can't have a rock star without a speed tick on this bar. Okay? So the, the rock star is very dependent on that speed tick. All right, so here we go. We're going to break out of a channel. All right. So we're breaking out of the channel. Now look at the size of the bars that are breaking out of that channel. That's telling us that we get a very strong approach towards that line of resistance. That's, that's the key, Richard. How do you get advance notice? Those were, this is how you get adva advance notice. See this? This is our momentum indicator. See this overbought? That's our exhaustion indicator. See this speed tick? See this pullback alert? We don't trade on this bar. Okay? All of these are that advance notice that you're asking about. The open of this bar is where we trade. So we have advanced notice that there's a good opportunity for a, a rock star to be on the open of this bar. But we don't know until the bar opens. And that's where our decisions are made. For this bar, um, could have entered here, but there's a better chance I entered up here and got a better fill. And I was out of this trade before this bar was even closed. Okay? All right, so you watch the breakout of the channel. You see the bigger bars. And there's a strong approach towards the, our support and resistance lines. If yes, if, that, if, if that's what you're looking for, and you can go, okay, yeah, broke out of a channel, we have a strong approach. Then I'm going to continue to watch and try to qualify this as a trade setup. If those are little tiny bars and it just kind of drifts outside that that uh, channel, eh, I'm probably not paying much attention. So we add the momentum bars, the black to gray to light gray. If we have strong momentum, I'm going to continue to watch. If not, probably not paying that much attention. Now, for those of you that want to look at tuning the rules that we that I use, and a lot of people do, and I encourage you to tune the rules to your risk tolerance levels. If you're looking to tune the rules, you can wait until a bar gets overbought or oversold. You can add that to your 
criteria. You can not trade. See, occasionally we'll get a channel and then this first bar. We get all of the speed tech. We get, you know, pullback alert. We get a rock star on the open of this bar. Occasionally that happens. You can just say, look, I don't have enough momentum here. I don't have a strong enough sense of exhaustion for a one bar breakout. I'm going to exclude that from my trades. Okay, we have, Christopher, where are you? You're here, right? You don't take one bar pushes, right? Yeah, so that's part of his trade setup though, that he's comfortable with. And you can do that. No trades if, like I said, the breakout you want to see are these big bars. If you get a bunch more little bars and it just kind of oh, keeps just kind of chugging along with these little bars, rule it out. It's not a breakout. All right, then we get a speed tick. If we have a speed tick and price is run up and slammed into that resistance, my finger's on the trigger. I don't, I'm not trading on this bar. I'm waiting. So I'm ready. Now, optional. You can, again, if you only have black momentum bars, say, I don't trade black. I need more momentum. Now, we have different speed ticks, different threshold levels. There's this one, then the threshold two is a medium blue one, and then threshold three is a great big blue one. You can decide, well, I only trade the small white ones. And there's a lot of information about that. I'm not going to explain all of that here. But it's basically the faster the orders go through, the bigger and bluer the speed ticks become. Okay. So you can decide that you just don't trade anything but the white ones or just the white and medium blue ones, but you won't trade the big blues or you could just trade them all. It's up to you. Now, my rule is this bar for a rock star trade setup must open five ticks or less from this line of resistance. If it's five ticks or less, and we get this rock star that's outside of our naked rock star zone, you'll have to refer back to yesterday for that, that's outside of the zone, then I'm going to short this right here. Now, if it opens seven ticks away but backs up after it opens, then I'll short it when it backs up, as long as I'm five ticks or less from this resistance. Then we have a rock star trade setup. I'll be placing a, what I want you to do is place a limit order to short it for five ticks. Now, optional criteria. Wait for the freight trading to take place. A lot of our traders don't, don't trade on the open of this bar. They're going to wait a few seconds. Remember I told you about the freight trading. What was happening here is the, the manipulation where they probably bought down in here and sold it up in here. And then all the people that are jumping in or haven't sold yet or are still buying will run it up a little bit more before it turns. So this could, this could run up a bit more. So a lot of our traders will wait just a few seconds after the open of this bar to see if they get a better fill. And some traders will open will just do it right on the open of the bar and if they don't get the open they're not going to trade it. Okay? So that's all part of practicing and studying your risk tolerance levels. Um, you can certainly decide, you know what? I'll take this 
more than five ticks away from resistance. So my rule is five ticks or less. But your rules might say, okay, eight ticks or less. And again, that's that's how you tune something that that will now better suit your risk tolerance, better suit your needs for more or less trades. Okay? You can also require that that pullback alert is on the up thrust or climax bars with the speed ticks. Um, you can require a ricochet, which we talked about on Thursday. So you can add confluences to the setups to make them higher probability setups, and, and you'll you'll actually you'll have a lot fewer opportunities. But the opportunities that you do have will be higher probability. Okay. So we take those basic rules, and now we're going to add some options. Um, Nikki, average. Uh, those of you that are in the trade room every day, help me out here if you feel compelled to. I'm going to say, on average, three to eight trades per day in the trade room. Yeah, as long as you're registered D, you'll get a uh, you'll get a uh, recording. This. Uh, software is our indicator package. It's called Second Brain Trading, and we have different packages, and I'm going to go over some specials with you at the end, Lawrence. We, uh, we trade in the trade room from 9 a.m. Well, the trade room opens at 9 a.m. I come on the mic about 9.35, but the trade room opens at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and we trade in the trade room until noon. Yes, all previous sessions are recorded every day and are available to our members. Yeah, we do have a monthly uh, fee for the room, but you're way better off doing a package uh, because we actually give you some time in the trade room with each package. Rose, that's a good question. I will trade for a net three winning trades per day. or net three losing trades net meaning if I lost the first trade I have to win the next four okay I stop trading live I switch to sim and I finish the trading session in sim my goal remember what I said at the beginning and my goal has not changed in many years I do not think about money my goal is consistency and account growth. I want to see consistency in my trading. I want to see consistency in the setups. I want to con see, see consistency in me following my rules. I want to see consistent growth in my trading account. And that's my goal. And when I focus on that, the money takes care of itself. Um, yeah, the, the trade room is like three twenty-five a month. But again, you the packages you're really better off buying a package, and then you can like basically get three months for free with the package price or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's three twenty-five a month for the uh, for the trade room. All right, so options based on risk tolerance. So again, suggest that maybe you say, okay, I'll only take these trade setups that have three bars of strong momentum. Okay, so that would be an option. I'm not sure what you. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what you do, uh, Christopher. I know you won't take one bar pushes, but I don't know if you have a minimum number. Other, maybe two is it? No, there is no recurring fee. Once you own it, you own it. You get all updates for free. In fact, okay, so I'll jump ahead real quick here. We have a package called the Einstein. 
And that's a one and done package. And I'm going to talk about it at the end. I'm not going to talk about it much right now. Um, but basically, it's anything that we have, any programs we have, trade room, education, mentoring, um, indicators, uh, um, support, um, anything that we have, you get. Plus, anything that we develop in the future, we have a lot of Einsteins here now that just received free indicators that we developed uh, recently. Everybody got them for free. So once you're done, uh, once you're in the Einstein program, Every program, we just developed a new mentoring program that, in fact, Christopher and Graham are our first two people in the program. And uh, this is a peer mentoring program that they're in. You, Einstein's get it for free. Other people have to pay for it. So it's a one and done kind of thing. Um, we used to have a deal with Bloodhound. I could, if you want to buy Bloodhound, I could sell it to you for a discount if you bought it with a package uh, of our stuff. Um, but I do have a good relationship with the guys over at Bloodhound. I've been working with them for a long time. All right, so we're looking at having a number of bars of momentum. We're looking at an overbought condition. All right, these are options based on your risk tolerance. Maybe you decide you got to have a pullback alert, a ricochet, or it must be X ticks from resistance. Maybe you want to start using market orders instead of limit orders. Over time, you'll probably do that, but I don't recommend it initially. Okay? Maybe you want to wait for a few seconds. A lot of our traders do that. I always tell people, don't get in a hurry. Just go over and place your order. You know, if price backs up, then you get a better fill. If price takes off, well, then don't, don't, nothing, no, no problem. No, I mean, you're not, you're just not going to get filled. You just missed a trade. Just wait for the next one. All right, we like to use major areas of support and resistance, which is what this is. This is our FT reset line. Um, we use high and low of the day for minor support and resistance. Um, we have most run in NT7. All of it runs in NT8. We stopped developing for NT8. I mean, now for NT7 a long time ago. Most all traders have switched to NT8. They still have some stragglers because there are some programmers or people, developers, that can't figure out how to make their programs run on NT8. So they're just kind of stuck. Um, but we were one of the first to uh, to develop for NT8, and we actually helped them fix a lot of stuff in NT8 because they couldn't do what we needed it to do. So our development of our indicators and our products helped them fix NT8. But that's a whole different story. All right. So I will show you some setups in action. All right, so look. We have a small channel here. We have a strong push, pullback alert, ricochet. But this isn't where we traded. This was the trigger bar. See the speed tick? And then the, whoops. And then the rock star on the open of the bar. Sorry this is so blurry. This this is just a bad video from our trade room videos. All right, again, we see the speed tick. See the, see the channel and the size of the bars breaking out of the channel? This is what it looks like. This is that naked rock star zone I was telling you about. Don't take a, a naked rock star trade inside of here. So I'm always watching the countdown timer down here to be ready for the next trade. There's our rock star. Shorted it right there. Do you guys still hear me? Okay.
So again, very simple trading system. You don't have to know all about every indicator in trading. This is a very simple system that you can practice. And you can practice hundreds of them in market replay over and over and over again to become very consistent. Yes, I have a hard target of five ticks. Somebody once told me you never go broke putting money in the bank. And that really stuck with me. I'm going to take my five ticks and I'm going to play, place one contract for five ticks. And I'm going to get really, really, really good at doing that. While I'm getting good at doing that, I'm going to watch my account grow. When my account grows to a point, I'm going to add another contract. And I'm going to keep doing that very small thing, that very simple edge. And I'm going to keep exploiting it over and over and over again. And I'm going to become the best in the world at it. That's the mission. And then the money will take care of itself. And that, what is this, 11 years now? So, yeah, it, it, uh, it actually is getting better because of the prevalence of the, uh, the uh, mechanical trading, the HFTs. Well, you could call it counter trend, Ron. We are very dependent on a trend, and my expectation is that the trend is going to continue. So this, instead of counter trend trading, this is actually pullback trading. We're only trading that the expected pullback. Yes, the mentoring program has been launched for the VIP Einsteins, Rose. You should have, are you an Einstein, Rose? Okay, you should have got an email about it. Check your email or spam or send me a message on at support down here. Here's the email address. And I'll make sure you get the email. All right. So now let's look at, we looked at the rock star. Naked rock star is very similar to the rock star. It's what's scary. You know why it's scary? What are you scared of? Why is it scary? You should never be scared trading. If you're scared, you should never be trading live. Ever. That's what this mentoring program we have works on. You've got a lot of work to do if you find anything about you, what you're doing scary. Yeah, but what's the common in every trend? What's common? Exactly. Not only are they common, they're they have a particular rhythm and they're predictable much more predictable than how a trend is going to go or how long a trend is going to go all right so when we started trading our rockstar trades we noticed that a lot of the rockstar trade setups did not have any support or resistance behind them and they still worked out so rather than just start trading all of them I look for something in common with the ones that did work out versus the ones that did not. Turns out almost all of them had either a pullback alert, which is that dot with a number in it, or were overbought or oversold. Okay? 
most of the times they had both. All right, so we suddenly went from getting an average of three to four trades, a trading session, to maybe now three to eight or ten trades. Um, and it really didn't affect our win-loss ratio. So here, remember, this is for the rock star, the basic rules, and some options. So what happens here is the with the naked rock star, we're going to remove all references to support and resistance because that's why we call it naked. Right? It doesn't have the help of so having some support or resistance behind the trade. We're also going to turn some of these options that were options for the Rockstar trade are now going to become part of the rules for the naked Rockstar trades. Okay, and this is where this zone comes into play here. This is called a naked rock star zone. Keep that in mind. You might see this again later. All right, so we're, we're still looking to break out of a channel. We still want those momentum bars pushing hard. We, we now need price to get overbought or oversold, depending on which direction we're heading, and or pullback alert doesn't have to have the two it could have a one or two or three in it uh, they change colors Lynn um, a naked rock star is gold because it's outside of this zone the white ones will be inside this zone okay and I'm going to change that color because it's hard to see on our chart sometimes Oh, short. Think about it. Break it out of a channel. Hard push. Exhaustion setting in. If price is exhausted, which way do you think it's going to go next? We also try to make it a little easier. If the rock star is on top of this bar, that's telling you, that's, pretend that's resistance. That's telling you price is going to drop here. Okay? So to qualify a naked rock star trade, we need either this overbought, oversold, this pullback alert, or both. That's even better. Okay? Of course, we need the speed tick because there is no rock star anything without a speed tick. You're going to trade the gold ones only. Well, you don't see the full trend here, LT. This is just a small snapshot. But we're going to say this is an upward trend. And we're, play, we're, we're trading the pullback from the trend. Okay? And we're going to trade the gold rock stars only. The reason this is gold is because it printed outside of this zone. When price was channeling here, it was channeling inside this zone. So we want to see a breakout of this zone. Okay, so optional uh, options based on risk tolerance, same thing. Must have X bar of momentum. You could place a market order instead of a limit. You could wait a few seconds before the setup. Okay, this is the naked rock star zone. If you get a rock star inside this zone, Never trade it inside the zone as a naked rock star. Okay? What does naked mean? No support or resistance. Out here, fine. Right? It's outside the zone. In here, not fine. Would not trade that. But now I would. Now it's a rock star trade. Although, I would, a lot of people still won't. We have watched where 
most people now, if we get a rock star inside this zone, doesn't matter if they're supportive resistance, a lot of people just won't trade it. The Super D is actually inside the naked rocks, I mean inside the rock star indicator, Robert. So you have the ability to tune the Super D inside that. We use the Super D on the charts as, tra as a trade management tool. Once you're in a trade, to decide how to manage that trade based on divergent signals. And, I'm, and I actually don't go into a lot of that today, but it is in our training videos. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, now it's back. I, so I only used for naked rock star trades inside that zone. Okay. I don't worry about that for rock star trades personally, but you certainly could. Uh, again, that's how you choose to tune the system. All right. We have another little kind of cool indicator. Um, for trade management, you certainly, it would be very helpful, Robert. Yeah. We have a little kind of a cool little tool um, called OTS. Sometimes, because of the zoom factor of your chart and the very quick decisions that we need to make, it's hard to see where your targets and stops are relative to where support and resistance might be. So, we have this little indicator. It's just, it doesn't have these words on it. But we have this little indicator. So if you if you put on a buy order, you know that your buy target was here and your stop is down here. If you put on a sell order, your target is down here and your stop is up here. We actually have people use this for a lot of other trading systems. Just so you can quickly visualize where your stops and your target is. All right, now, speed tick trade setup. We're introducing these setups to you in the reverse order that we developed them for our trade room. We're doing this because over time, we continue to find ways to make trading our system easier and more efficient. Um, so we taught you the Rockstar and Naked Rockstar first because it's really the most simple and high probability trade setup that we currently have. That's where you should start learning our system. You should become proficient at the rock star trades before attempting naked rock star trades. You become proficient at the neck naked rock star trades before trading just these speed tick trades. Okay? So basically I'm showing you these to show you what to work towards after you've mastered the rock star trades. Okay? So this is the speed tick trade setup. So the basic rules, same. Breaks out of a channel, strong approach towards a support and resistance line. Momentum bars go from black to light. The bar, the, the trigger bar gets overbought or oversold, which is that pink outline. Now price must hit one of our major lines of support and resistance. Okay, it must hit it on the bar with the speed tick. Okay. So if this bar just closed here, and then this bar opened here, not a trade for me. Got to hit, and then back up. That's my confirmation that this line has value to the people that are trading right now. Okay, that this is actually acting as resistance. Just because it prints on the screen doesn't tell me conclusively that this is resistance. This is an area to watch. And if I can actually watch people respect that line, then I'm going to short this on the open of this bar. All right, so we're going to get a, a speed tick, meaning it's a manipulated bar. Five ticks or less on the open of the next bar. Now, oh, let me back up. So remember I told you we have different thresholds. 
if the rate you think of think of the speed ticks as being uh, a speedometer and if the rate of the speed that generates a white speed tick is doubled then we'll see a bigger then this is bigger than we actually use I'm just I just made this bigger so you can see it then we have a bigger with medium blue cyan colored speed tick Or we have this great big blue one, which is three times the speed of the white speed ticks. So for a speed tick trade, we're not going to trade those because it could also be something else, not just a manipulation. It could be a news event, whether it's scheduled or unscheduled. We'll see a lot of these at the open uh, because there's a lot of people that trade the open every morning. So we will just typically ignore the big blues for a speed tick trade setup. So I don't know if you know, but the, the speed tick was my first attempt to find out when the market makers were doing their thing. So obviously they're creating an unnatural price change. So if price is just trading in a tight range, right, that's us, right? then we get this sudden burst. That's an unnatural increase. Okay, They'll be forcing price to the next level where they know they force it up there, then they're going to dump it off before it actually hits that level where the sellers are laying in wait and the rest of us get trapped. Okay? Now, other things you can do based on your risk tolerance. Again, same rules. To see, each setup doesn't have a whole different set of rules. We just some some minor differences. So you don't have a a whole lot you have to learn. You just have to practice. All right, you have a pullback alert or a ricochet. Okay? So that you have to have X number of ticks from resistance and place a market order, not a limit, or you wait X number of seconds before placing your order. Or you wait for the next bar. A lot of things you can do here. Okay, I guess if it were possible to determine the end of the pullback sequence, your indicators then might be possible to join the likely... Exactly, Dave. But we don't know. All we know is that we have a lot of good information that price is going to pause and start going the other direction. We don't know how far it's going to go. But there's a high probability it's going to go at least five ticks. And that's all I need for an edge. That's it. I'm not going to try to squeeze it for 8 ticks, 10 ticks, 12 ticks, 100 ticks. After it hits my target, I'm done with that trade. I don't care what price does. My mission is to put a check in the win column. Yeah, I, if, if within about 3 minutes of the open or a scheduled news event land, I'll stop trading and I'll wait for that event to be over. Super D and well actually they're the same thing. They're both divergence indicators. So Super D has the flash inside of it. So it's one of the seven oscillators. So speed tick with flash is absolutely a uh, 
legitimate setup. Pullback alert and flash, possibly. Oh, pullback alert. Um, we're measuring, and this was in a, on Thursday, so you can watch the video on Thursday, but we're measuring the price action inside the each bar. And if the price action is such that it tells us that there's a large amount of churning, you know what churning is? When price is all headed in one direction and suddenly you reach a level where the ticks coming in the, between the buyers and sellers have changed. First it was like all buyers or all sellers, and then now it's buyer, sellers, buyer, sellers, buyer, sellers. So that's called a churning. So we're looking for that churning. And, and are you familiar with volume spread analysis? If you, if you do a study and look up volume spread analysis, we're using a lot of that information inside the pullback alert. Um, did you register for it? You should have you should have gotten it in an email. But if you don't find it, uh, it's also on our YouTube channel. Go to uh, support at the and and let me know you don't have the link and I'll email it to you. Yeah, Nikki, it's hard for me to say what the average learning curve is. The average, um, because I don't know, other than what I'm told, I don't actually know how hard some people work at their trading. I know they know how hard they should work. But if you put in two or three hours a day of hard practice, first of all, you're going to pick this up really quickly. Within two weeks, you're going to feel fairly comfortable. I'm not going to say you would be anywhere near wanting to trade with real money. But you'll be understanding the trade setups within a couple of weeks. And then it's all about practice and tuning. And that just takes time. Now, we have that peer mentoring program. And we have what's called the fast forward program. Both of those are free for our Einstein people. If you take advantage of both of those, they're there for you. And if you do take advantage of both of those, we'll dramatically shorten your learning curve. It's there for you. We provide it to a lot of traders. And a lot of traders have the best of intentions of using it. But then, you know, life gets in the way and whatever. And they find out, you know what? Maybe I'm just a hobbyist. <laughs> Maybe I don't want this as bad as I thought I did. All right. Quick question. Which one is a valid speed tick trade setup? Quick. Quick. Tell me. Which one? Three? You sure? Anybody else? How about those that are not? <laughs> Two, huh? Speed tick trade setup. Valid. Which one's valid? There's only one valid. Speed tick trade set up here. <laughs> but I just told you, Nikki. I just told you. Not that one. Price open on the bar. Uh, on the line. Price open on the line. So what does that tell me? I have no resistance behind my trade. Got to have resistance behind my trade to be a speed tick setup. Well, of course, 
price opened above the line. No resistance behind my trade. Not a trade setup. Oh, look. Within five ticks or less, I have major resistance behind my trade. Yep. Now, here's that trade management thing I was talking about. So, say we entered and we sold short there on that bar. And instead of it doing what it did over here, what if you entered here and price took off, kind of muddled around here for a while, and the next bar opened up here. Now what do you do? Oh yeah, this should this should probably be uh, pink here. Do you just get out? Or do you start managing the trade? I wouldn't jump out because price could still drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage that trade by adjusting my stop. Okay? I'm going to start shortening my stop. And while I'm doing that, I'm hoping that maybe price is going to start to drop. But since the conditions that got me into the trade have changed, meaning there's no more chance of this resistance behind me, I'm going to start shortening my stop. Okay. Brand new trade setup. I'm only going to show you real quick this one because this is the last one I want you to learn. <laughs> but, I, but I wanted to show you. So what I just showed you was the speed tick setup and it required support or resistance behind the trade. This works best on a one-minute chart because this is taking advantage of what the um, the market makers are doing, the manipulators, the guys that create big bars like this. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So the longer we trade our system, the more attuned we become to opportunities. So for many years, we completely ignored some of the good trade setups. <laughs> that didn't have any safety nets. That that would be our support and resistance lines. But for those of us that have traded our system for more than a little while, we decided to take advantage of some opportunities to keep a high probability trade set up. So it's a new trade for us and would be one that new traders would learn later in their experience with the indicators and setups. But they're worth noting and planning to trade when the time is right and add to your trade plan. That's correct. Oh, wait. It's a software. Oh, um, yeah, I, I can't imagine why anybody would want to ever use a Ranger or a Renko. I, I've been doing this for 17 years and not one person has ever proven to me that they can trade successfully with those charts, although they really make a pretty chart, don't they? All right, so I'm going to introduce a couple of new indicators that I created to help us trade these naked speed tick trades. This is called our CVI or climactic volume indicator. So basically, very simply, climactic volume is when the volume in the current bar has reached a point where it's some percentage of the previous X number of bars. So as an example, Say the current bar volume has exceeded 300% of the average volume of the last 10 bars. 
when we see that, that's a sudden increase in volume in that one bar. And that's where we get climactic volume. This is what it looks like. I'm going to just drag it on this video player instead of doing it through the uh, presentation. All right. So, uh, again, I don't want to show you what this looks like on static charts because it it's too easy to fool people showing things on static charts. This is that OTS indicator I was telling you about. It's just a quick visual of where your targets and stops might be. All right, so we've got two indicators here. One is going to be the climactic volume. Now, right now, we don't have a potential trade setup, but look at all the confluence of indicators. Look at this push up. Look at the speed tick, ricochet, pullback alert. This is from our trade room, by the way. This was, what day was this? 21st. Yesterday. All right. Now, there. Right there. Notice when that printed? As soon as the volume increased to a point where it was X percent more than the average of these last few bars, we print this climactic volume. That's this box. Now, the next thing we're going to do, so, so now this potentially qualifies as a naked speed tick trade. But there's one more qualifier we need. And this is our other new indicator. This looks yellow here. It's actually set to a, like a lime green, but just so you can see the shadows. You notice these bars all have shadows behind them, a, a colored shadow. That's called our Wix percent. I noticed when I was doing this study of this naked speed tick, if the bar was particularly wicky, like the wicks were bigger than the body by a certain percent, the trade almost always failed. So I decided, okay, well, I can't just visually figure out when it's X percent bigger than the uh, body. So I created that indicator. So notice it's green and we have this ricochet, speed tick, shorted it right here. Okay, so that's called a naked speed tick trade, but we needed more confluence, more qualifying factors. So you can see it went more than five ticks very quickly. Hit the target here, I'm out of the trade. Now, whatever happens after that, I don't care. I don't care how far it goes. Don't care. Put money in the bank. If you decide over time, and this, this is for every trade, if you decide over time that you want to put on a trailing stop or you want to scale out, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, uh, I, I don't I don't fault anybody for doing that. I just don't do that because again my mission is consistency. Right? Alright. So trade management. Somebody asked about this. All trades are entered with a bracket order with a five tick target and a seven tick stop. Okay, we use the advanced trade management that uh, NinjaTrader provides. I never move my target during the trade. I always manage the stop. I never mark it out of a trade because there's too, too much slippage potential. If the conditions change such that I would never have gotten into that trade under the current conditions, 
I began shortening my stop. Never, ever, ever do I move the stops out. And stops managed if the conditions that got me into the trade change. Okay? Now, you certainly have options. And you can, over time, test these options. You can have bigger or smaller stops and targets. I don't care. I just tell you what I use in the trade room and what I've been doing for a long time. But you may find something that works better for you. You may decide that scaling is good for you. You may set up an ATM that if you hit your break even or, or if you hit your target, you, your stop comes up to break even or plus one. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. That's the cool thing about this system. It gives you the option to tune it to fit your risk tolerance levels. All right. So the special um, of last about pricing, by far the biggest bang for the buck and has long-term effects on your trading is the Einstein. Okay? So we have a kind of a, a neat thing. We get a lot of people say, oh, no, I really want the Einstein, but I've invested in other stuff. So I can't. So we'll, we're going to actually... If you have other stuff that you want us to credit, we'll credit you up to $300 for other stuff that you've bought. So just let us know uh, that you'd like to get a credit, and we'll credit you on checkout if you want to do the Einstein program, which is a, this is our one and done. All of the educational material, all of the mentoring, trade, you know, unlimited trade room. Um, all of the videos, uh, just everything is included in the Einstein. If you want to ease up on it and maybe do a little at a time, certainly you don't get all the indicators or all the other stuff that we provide, but you can either choose the Brain Boost or the Academic Special Offer. You will be missing some of the things I talked about, won't be included. But again, that's, it, it's a good way to get started with us. All right. So now, if uh, I know you are, I've already answered in a lot of your questions. But if you have any questions, now's the time. I'm happy to stay here as long as you have questions. I don't want anybody leaving here. Not knowing or understanding what we were talking about, but more importantly, why were you here? What were you here to learn? What did you hear or not hear that you wanted to hear? What did we miss? I'm not sure if you can hear that. I've got a fire truck going by. Man, it was loud here. I do see somebody typing, so I'm going to assume that's a question. The add-on suite is something totally separate. We've got some really cool add-ons that we've created for NinjaTrader 8. Um, we've got an integrated market replay data downloader where you can download multiple instruments and um, dates all at once. So it, we do have an application that's external to NinjaTrader, but this one is actually, you can access from within NinjaTrader. We have a kind of a, a little helper for uh, uh, people that have crashing issues with NinjaTrader 8 called our Boost. Um, we have a, if you want to change the theme or the look of your NinjaTrader, we have a theme changer app. We have a workspace manager. Um, lots of stuff, like 12 different things. Yes, if you start with a lower package, we will provide a credit towards 
a, an upgrade. Absolutely. Did I say old indicators? When did I say old indicators? No, Bob. Only the rock star. The components are individual indicators. Uh, you would have to own the individual indicators to see them on your charts. So the rock star, if you buy the rock star, even though it takes the other indicators to generate a signal, you won't see those other indicators on your chart. It's best to have them. That's why we offer these packages. Robert, when did I say old indicators? I'm not sure I, I said that but I'm not sure what you're referring to. Yeah, if you have a, a package already and you want to upgrade, we will absolutely apply what you paid previously to the upgrade. Oh, 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 I see. No, not ours. Any old indicators that you aren't using anymore, like that you bought from some other vendors. Yeah, sorry, not yours, but even yours, I mean, we will absolutely apply your purchase price towards an Einstein. But if you have other vendor indicators that you purchase that you just aren't planning to use anymore, we'll give a credit of up to $300 for those indicators. We're just trying to find a way to make it easier for people to make a decision when they've they feel like, man, I've bought so much stuff and, I, and, I, and I'm not using it. We're just making it a little easier for them to say, okay, well, if you have stuff you're not using that you bought, we'll, we'll discount your price some for that so you don't feel like you're, you completely lost all that money. Uh, did you send it to support? If you did, when did you send it? today uh, only what's on YouTube already most of the training videos are inside our fast forward program cross there's a lot of explanations on videos we have like the one we just did or on our YouTube channel but the specific fast forward training information is in our fast forward program that the Einstein people get. Um, yeah, I've been preparing this, working on this presentation, Frank. So sometimes my, uh, uh, if I get real busy doing other stuff, I can't get to my emails. So I do plan on taking care of those this afternoon. Yeah, so Nikki, if you ever want to do a trial of the room, come to our website during trading room hours. And down in the bottom right corner of every page is a little chat. And you can just click on that chat. And most days, Connor is sitting there waiting for your, you to chat him up and uh, ask him if you can do a trial. He'll check to see if you've done other trials with us. And if you haven't, then he'll give you a password that you can come in and do a, a trial with us. Yeah, it, this is renamed. Yeah, it used to be Bunt, and now we call it Second Brain. Yeah, we just kind of repackaged it to freshen it up a bit a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just needed a, a rebranding of the same because we've been doing Bunt for so long that people just kind of started to tune it out because they thought they knew what it was. So we did some rebranding so that people would at least re-engage. So if they thought they knew what it was, they could come back and give us another look, which actually was very successful. So yeah, Bunt is uh, what we were previously known as, at least our trading system. 
All right, any other questions? We'd, we'd love to have you guys come join us, hang out with us in the trade room. We, we have a lot of very uh, nice people in the trade room every day that are more than happy to help you. <laughs> come come hang out with us in the trade room or sign up with us this weekend. Um, I will remotely connect for people that want it. Now, our, our uh, we have a really nice installer that pretty much handles everything. If you want to download and install all of our our indicators and our templates and our workspaces and all that. Um, we have a real easy installer that does that. But some people are uncomfortable doing that. So in that event, I'm happy to, for Einstein people, remotely connect to your computer and do it all for you. Um, even setting up NinjaTrader for you if that's what, you, what you'd like me to do. So I do it all the time. I'm really proficient and fast at it, and I know if we run into any problems, I can usually work through them pretty quickly and get you up and running. At the same time, if you want to add the um, essential add-on suite for NinjaTrader, I can do that too. That's where my, my main... Uh, location is I'm currently in Southern California I travel the country in an RV because as long as I have internet I can work anywhere so right now I'm in Southern California on a beach next to a lake we have better than that um, on YouTube Uh, we have a, uh, I'm going to look for it here for you, so I'll find it for you. We have a, uh, what do they call it, library? No. Connor handles all this. He's not here today. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Playlist, that's what it's called. So we have a playlist called Trade of the Day. And we've got like 130-something Trade of the Day videos in there. This is actually a really, really good learning tool. You can watch what we do, how we do it. Yeah, and here's the cool thing. It's exactly, in fact, it comes from our trade room videos, and it's exactly what I talked about today. What? <laughs> oh, I'll bet you he was younger than I am now in that picture. I'm almost 60. So the trade of the day videos are excellent learning opportunities. Yeah, I'd before who was that at asked Nikki before I spend a lot of time sitting and waiting in a trade room, which you know we can wait a long time between trade setups. But <laughs> well, that's a whole nother story. Um, go watch the trade of the day videos, those are going to be that's me talking in the trade room. I, I say what I'm about to do before the trade. I tell you when I'm going to get in the trade. I tell you when I get in the trade. I tell you how I'm managing the trade, and I talk about the trade afterwards. <laughs> uh, no. No, you can do it all from the comfort of your own home. So... Yes, I have been caught on national television wearing a tutu. That's what Dave is referring to. 
my wife invented a product, and we ended up on Shark Tank. And uh, we got a deal with Mark Cube only because of me wearing a tutu. I know. It's something you can't unsee. You got to have a lot of confidence to wear a tutu on national television, I can tell you. And pigtails. Yeah. Yeah, actually, Mark was... He... he uh, they asked. I, Lori asked me what I did. They cut all that part out. But Lori asked me what I did. And I told her that I was a day trader. And Mark went, oh, that's a hard job. But they cut all that. But Mark knows what I do. Uh, my wife talks to him two or three times a week. All right. Well, let's go have a weekend. I hope this was informative for you guys. I hope you uh, come join us. Sign up with us. I'll be happy to help you get everything all set up. And we'll have you trading pullbacks by next week. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye now.